welcome back to my channel this is Luna over here I am a real estate agent here in Philadelphia so in today's video we're going to do a topic on 10 things I don't pay as a real estate agent Number one is I don't really pay for any leads, whether if it's, you know, online leads, Facebook leads, or buyer leads from Zillow. I used to pay for them a lot, um, anywhere from $300 to $500 a month with uh, Zillow Premier Agent, and automatically you will be logging in for like a six month contract. So that's something that I spent at the beginning, but I no longer pay for them just because I don't see as much result and it's not very effective, you know, especially when you're new in the business. And number two is I don't really pay for any office or desk fees. If you interviewing, if you interview a lot of uh, brokerage, you will know most of them, they have common area for agents to work. Typically, if you join a team, you will given a desk space that you can work in the office. If you are an independent agent, most real estate office will have common area for you to work in. Um, it's really not necessary to pay for an office space. I, when I was with Keller Williams, I did pay for office space around like $300 just to share with another agent. Um, to have a closed up office space. And disclaimer, the reason that I talk about Keller Williams a lot is I have only been with two real estate companies so far. And the first one is Keller Williams, it's a franchise. And right now I am with a local brokerage. That's why I'm re referencing a lot with Keller Williams because I'm just using them as something that I've experienced, something that I know. Okay. Let's move on to number three. Number three is I don't pay for expensive rent. Being in the real estate business, it makes me realize that it's not a smart idea to overpay for your rent, especially when you're a millennial. It's not effective. I mean, you are supposed to spend one third of your income for housing. And as far as rent, let's say if you are in this area, you're not sure that you're going to stay in there for more than five years. It's definitely smarter to rent. But if you're going to stay, you know, for more than five years, then it's definitely smart for you to own a housing. So a lot of people, when the credit is not good, when they can't afford to purchase a home, they have to rent a house. So my rent right now is really low. Uh, it's $950 per month. I just try to keep my housing expense as low as possible. I don't want to pay for too much on the rent. And the number four is I don't pay is a car loan. So um, when I was in college, I had a car, but it was my parents who helped me purchase my car. So it's bought in cash. And after graduated, we sold that car. Right now we're just driving, me and my husband just drive one car. And that, that car was, you know, being bought in cash. So we don't really have to pay any monthly payment. There's no interest on the car. I think car loan is definitely a big enemy for people who are in debt if you have a car loan definitely try to get rid of it because the interest rate is really high and it's going to be very hard for you to get out of debt if you have car loan um number five flights so i no longer pay for any flights last year i still pay for my flight when i go back to china but this year because you're in real estate you have to take more serious step about your financial situation. So I do do a lot of research on credit cards. I watch a lot of channels. So I know, you know, paying for flights is a very stupid idea because if you could just open up a couple credit cards and, you know, accumulate enough points, then you will definitely be able to take a few hundred dollars off from your flight. Sometimes you can even book your flight for free. So that's number five. I no longer pay for my flights, whether it's international or national flight. I just enjoy the points that I have with my credit card. Um, number six is hair salon expenses. Okay, about that one, I don't know if you guys 
know when I just moved to Philly like two years ago, my hair was like bleach blonde and that took a lot of money a lot of time and energy to maintain that blonde because my hair is naturally black so if i decide to keep and maintaining my hair blonde it's typically a monthly i would spend between anywhere from 150 to 300 dollars just to go to hair salon to get my hair highlight and just maintain it blonde however that's not even the only issue like if you go to a hair salon, if you want to do an ombre, sometimes it takes from like anywhere from three hours to four hours. If you want to do more efficiently, you just want to get a couple highlights. Full head of highlights is going to take anywhere between, you know, an hour to two hours. So as a real estate agent, I no longer have that many hours to go take care of my hair. So I just kind of took that took that completely out of the equation. I don't really go to hair salon very often. I'm just cutting my hair short, maintaining it this way, so I don't have to see, you know, I have to go there and spend money and waste my time. So that's number six. Number seven is I don't spend money in Starbucks. I used to, but I'm not like crazy, you know, enthusiastic about getting a cup of Starbucks coffee to start my day. I never really was. Um, I have a coffee machine. I have a French press and a K cup drip machine in the office. We have coffee machine at not in the office in my house. We have coffee machine in the office, so it's really not necessary for me to make to buy coffee for three four dollars. Instead of I can just make 50 60 cents cup of coffee at home or go to the office So that's number seven number eight. I do not pay for any type of lunches Well, except if I had a big settlement or if I wanted to treat like my co-worker if it's anyone's birthday I would order food in the office for takeout, but I don't really purchase anything as lunch on my own just to go out grab lunch like I don't do that one because it's expensive if you just pack your own meal it's three four dollars however if you go out to grab something it could be anywhere between 10 to 15 to 20 dollars and also on the time like if you go out to sit in the restaurant you have to order you have to think about what you're gonna eat you have to pay tips you have to wait until they bring you the food it just it's too much time consuming and it also cost money so i don't really pay for lunches and number nine this one might be a little weird for somebody but i don't really pay for my business cards um when i joined canon we had like uh this big of long box of business card where the broker just pay for every single agent so i still kept that box and i have about like this much only used and I have like a pretty much a full box of business card. It just sits there um, Typically when people find me especially sellers I will order a magnet like a magnet business card from Vista print and I'll Attach that with my follow-up letter and I'll send it to their house I barely walk into someone and just pull out a business card in my pocket be like hey Here's my business card. I never really do that um, if people are interested in finding out or getting in contact with, with me, I will just ask them for their phone number or put their phone number in my phone. You know, if someone who's not interested, I don't really go ahead and just kind of approach be like, hey, here's my business card. I just barely do that. Um, I know people take different perspective on having the business card approach, but that's just my approach. So personally, I don't spend any money on business cards. So here are the 10 things that i do not pay as a real estate agent and i hope you guys enjoy this video please comment down below let me know what you think what topic you guys want me to do for the next video i appreciate you all we just reached to 6,000 subscribers a few days ago so uh thank you so much for the support and i'll see you guys in the next video bye